Hey, I'm Kev Kerr, I'm Mr. Cole. welcome back to MotoGP 18, has Mario had a tour time in her ass last time out, pace wise wasn't too bad, just pushed a bit too hard on the final lap, but with an improved bike, will improved results come around the Bugatti circuit at Le Mans in France. So here's Mario then, doing the test, just under half an hour ago in this first practice session. He's already set a banker up, as you can see, 48 freeze, he's doing the speed test. Just about clears the first speed trap. And his Bugatti layout of the Le Mans circuit. Of course, more famous for the 24 hour race, which is happening at the moment, around the circuit de la Sarf layout. The move sounds straight, a mole sounds straight, should I say. That's all he just about gets that second speed trap, does Mario. And it's way down on Orge Martins. That time you could see anyone at low 43. I think Mario would be lucky to be in the 45s or 46s. Does he go through the left hand? And this circuit feels wider. Much wider than it did before. Maybe because, again, we're on the Moto 3 bike. But then corners like this, the double right, don't feel as maybe challenging as. Uh, set that rider by. So you can get some slipstream. Oh, give us a sit stream. No, it didn't give us too much. Let's beat that speed trap test. So yeah, it doesn't feel like you're threading a needle as much into quite a few of these corners. As there you go, Mario completes the speed trap easy. That's all he gets into the rider in front. That's like he kicked a car door there. What the hell was that? And there's no incline between that right and left hander. Oh, you're not sucked to the apex, it's all a bit wide in the first right. And you threw the second hard on the power. He's done a 47. So now he does the braking test, does Mario. So you've got five points around the circuit, where well, you've got to brake perfectly. I guess in the first one is four. The chicane. Bit wide. Not very good line. And maybe downhill. It seems to be the same points as the speed test most of the time. Through these braking points. Yeah, you can get on the throttle so early now through that right hand there. You're no longer delaying, delaying, delaying. It's all once again he's slightly early, but still gets a check mark. You also got the different curbs as well around here. Some runoff as well to the right hand side. Should be useful in the wet. As all early again. Obviously the proof braking is not working then. Well man is just anticipating all of these braking points as connects at the top now with a 43 flat. They're being the 42s, or we're struggling to get into the 45s, 46s. Once again, early. See, nice flat out through the second part with 1.9, so, so yeah, we are aiming for the 45 cent. So a bit wide in the right. Bit of a stutter. Always love that. So we're trying to hold on to the rear there, Mario. Finally gets a perfect. We'll go through the double right at the end. Using all those curbs. Don't be using them too much as we saw a few weeks ago in Moto3 with Kornfeld. With all the leaders falling as now we've got the trajectory test. 53 flat for Mario to beat. He's definitely doing that. That's all he got us through the first chicane, do they? Just got to follow that line. There we go, 95%, 96, we'll take that. So where's the second section? And so of course we're going to be much slower than our fastest times. Oh, here's the second section through the slow left hander. There's so all got rider down our inside. Okay, you can go down the inside, buddy. Well, remember that for the race, though. So once again, 95. Mario, oh, very impressive in these first two. Virtue test now into the double right. This would be a bit trickier. 
Nicely on the power. Four and a nine. Once again, 95%. Don't be getting better at these. Not sure I ever see 100, but high 90s, definitely. It's all down to 94%. Shocking. Oh, 95. He saved it in the end. So I'm guessing the last one is through the final double right then. So it goes a bit wide there. There we go. And here it is. Through the double right. Get it down to first this time. See if that helps stop the bike. It's all a bit offline there. But 93% for the final one. That's not bad at all. And that's all of the tests done then. So trajectory test, definitely the most impressive. I was thinking then we've got the speed test as well. At least there's no plus one. And then early on everything apart from the final test in the breaking. So connect at the top head of Martin, Della Porta, Bastianini and Di Gian Antonio, Antonelli, Lopez, Pesecchi, Otel and Suzuki just beating Suzuki to round out the top 10. Looking further down around the top 20s, Berger, Loy in 23rd, and McDonald at the back by a second. Hopefully it's not like that in qualifying. So here goes Mayer for the first of three possible qualifying laps. Martin's laid down a marker, 44-3. But also teammate Loy's on the front row at the moment in third by Gabriel Rodrigo. We'll see how McDonald does he goes for the first corner. And breaking a bit cautiously into the chicane. Through the left and right. Hard on the power on the exit. Under the famous Dunlop Bridge and downhill into the right hander. He's two tenths down. He's a bit wide in the right, but can pick up the throttle nice and early and go all the way out to that exit curb. And pull the back bike back for the left hander. Get it down to second, hogging that curb on the inside. Don't to be so hesitant on the power, McDonald. Once again, go all the way to the exit curb as now we go downhill through the double right. Get it all the way down to first. And oh, bit of the camber there, trying to get the rear out as he put the throttle down. As we go down this back straight, this should be a good passing point into this left hand of the chicane. The bridge is slightly moved as well on this edition, so we can't use that as a breaking point. And look at McDonald, two tenths down. This Avinci is working round here in qualifying. Gets it all the way down to first gear. Maybe they didn't maximise that in practice. But it seems to be working on this qualifying lap as he goes through the double right at the end, rejoins. The normal circuit heads towards the line. It's a 45-6. As Mike sets a 44-3. Let's see if McDonald can get into those 44s. It's definitely a bit hesitant on the throttle at times. And he's so down too much into that first bend. As he goes through the chicane, just not very comfortable at the moment through that. We go under the Dunlop Bridge. That should be better than his first effort. It is, he's up. That's more like it, McDonald. It's always taking liberties with the track limits. It's an invalid lap. It's Sasaki. The Japanese rider goes to the top with a 43, and he's immediately beaten by Antonetti with 43 5. That time's a tumbling. The rubber's laid down on the track. It's getting quicker all the time, and Martin has now smashed him with a 43 for that. So McDonald's got to be in the 44, it's just to be in the midfield. At the moment he's near the back in 20 sip. Has he got five minutes remaining in this session? McDonald got one or two more laps up the sleeve then. There's all taking liberties with the track limits once again. It is like he's set for 44 this lap as well. It's a bit disappointing. Let's see how he goes. The next lap as he's preparing now through the double right at the end. Bike becomes so unhinged, breaking for that first right. As now we go towards the line. 
He did a 45 flat that that. Even though it says 2.6, so I swear it said a 45 flat. So here we go, McDonald in. Through the first corner, lift slightly. Get all the way down to first and accelerate over the curb. Being very aggressive. And he's quicker. Just 500, Soda Martin. And oh, I had to check up on the throttle. Almost did the same mistake he did on the previous lap. But nicely on the throttle this time. Again, checked it up a bit. Has he gone it slightly early for the mid part? Look at that, Martin's into the 42. It's absolutely ridiculous from the Grassini rider. And same for Kanetta as well. The Australia Glitzer rider takes pole by just hundreds of a second, thousands of a second ahead of his title rival. And McDonald down the back stretch, pushing hard. Go for the left and right. He's a second down. This is very good from McDonald. Looking much better. Through the left, maybe slowed down a bit too much. In through the double right. Hard on the power, heading towards the line. It's going to be a 44-44-4. 1.4 back, but hasn't improved his position much. So one more of that from McDonald then. Let's see if he can improve getting to those 43s maybe. So there you go. Finally able to take that kink fat out. A bit wide in the second part of the chicane. We should have gained some time. Or not. Down slightly. But better on the power out of the right hander. Connect still got that pole. Just waiting for the Martin response though. And there it is. Another 42 9. Thousands of a second separate them. And this is much better from McDonald. On his third lap. Hard onto the power, onto the back, stretch out through that right hander. Taking liberties, it feels like the curves at times, but it's paying off just about for the Avinto rider. Oh, break too deep into the left. He can take the right flat out and he's eight tenths back, heading into the final sector, which has not traditionally been strong though. But he's hooked up the right hander nicely. Oh, getting on the power through the left thrust holds it. And riding the first left. Or right, should I say. As he goes towards the line, this is quicker for McDonald 44 1. Ridiculous from Martin and Kinect. The only guys into the 42s and so by just three thousandths of a second as Martin beats his fellow Spaniard with DJ and Antonio rounding out the front row on another. Cresini. And then we've got the uh, Partrins in fourth and fifth. Head of Antonelli is an all Italian second row. In Bezzecchi, Otto, and Migno round out the third row with Lopez round out the top ten. Looking further down, where is Loy? He's alongside McDonald. Or just behind McDonald's. McDonald rounds out the seventh row with Beluga and Tuba. And you've got Loy, Binder, and Yachenko. On the 8th row with Arenas at the back. So we are looking at the full grid then. With our all the time second row behind the Spaniards. And DJ on the front row. And they can further down the field. You've got Suzuki leading the 4th row. And then you can see McDonald in 21st. Loy in 22nd. And then on the page of Doom. It is the tie rider and Arenas. The French Grand Prix. The riders are spread out on the grid. The light will soon go out and the Le Mans race will begin. So here's McDonald revving it up at the start. As it get underway for seven laps. An absolutely shocking start for McDonald. 
as he drops down to last, does he? No, he's 28. He managed to keep one rider behind him as we head towards the first corner. Very tempted to just dive the bike up the inside there. Let's see, here comes Arenas down the inside. Trying to force him at Don to go to the outside, which actually is working pretty well. And he's gone very deep into the right hander. But just holds that outside line. And oh, there's a bit of a mesh mash in front as he gets past his teammate Lloyd. Or does he? Heading into the left. Oh, Lloyd chops him off. No love lost between the teammates. Even though they are battling for 25th. You can see it's Cosmo on a couple of positions. Got the tie rider in front now. And here comes the Mesa around the outside. Or should I say inside? Or is that Ramirez? It's Ramirez trying to go down the inside, but Don's having none of it though. And holds on to 25th. This should be a tough seven hat race though. If we're better than like this on the opening that. Once everything settles down, it could be pretty lonely or feisty at the back. He does get past his teammate Lloyd finally. Oh, he goes down the inside a couple of riders. Down the inside of Foggia for 21st. There's Binder behind battling hard with Lloyd. Dawed into the right. Oh, he finds a way past Ob Arbeluno. And so ends up in 20th. Normally at the last set, he's been dropping back, but made up position stays behind Arenas. There's now Binders behind in 21st. So not a bad end to that for McDonald. And he's always so good in that chicane as well compared to everyone else. How about downhill into the right? Right on the back of Arena, so everyone on soft tyres. So you'll watch out for that near the end of the race as well. Tire wet. As you can see already, through that left hander, the rear end's been tricky. It's like it's on the turntable rather than tarmac. And you go through the double right. Just nail the throttle through the second part. There's a Lopez pass Mino for ninth. Loy pass Shachenko for 24th. Got hold into a top 20 position. Remember, this is his race objective. Finishing the top 20. So here comes Bin diving and look down the inside. Get out of here, Darrell. He's dropping back slightly from Arenas, which is a bit wide. Especially heading into the final sector. Well, he's not particularly strong. Has he got Suzuki up to 13th? Madonna taking his own line. Not getting warned about it though. Might just take down subsequent laps then. The race officials are fine with that. It's all a bit of a stutter. Going on to the third lap. Good run out of the final corner for McDonald. Sets a 44-5. He's got some good slip stream on Arena. So we thought he'd be slipping back into the clutches of Binder. We could be making a position up here into 90. Down the inside in the first corner. Nicely done, McDonald, and holds on into the chicane. Might be go time for him, because look at all these riders stacked up in front. Got Rodrigo out of the points. Very rare to see that from the Argentine rider. Bit different from a few seasons back for him. Definitely much improved now. It's the Barcelona-based Argentine as well. We're good friends with quite a few Spanish riders. As he takes a look for 17th. Not quite working out. McDonald slides wide. That was Arena to slip by. And that's compromised his exit, but he should be getting the slit stream now of the Spaniard. Oh yeah, easy slit stream. Look at that. Upgrades to the engine obviously worked. Go through the chicane. Tire wears barely anything. Which is good to see approaching halfway mark of this race. So we kept it nice and smooth, particularly in this final section, which has proved a bit difficult in qualifying. 
No, so using second gear instead of first as well. Just keeping that mid corner speed up as he gets a warning for running ride on this occasion. So it's a 44-1. Half a second ahead of Arenas, four tenths behind Rodrigo, but a terrible run into the front stretch means he's dropping back. The Argentine rider, but you can see a point right in front. That would be good reward for the team for developing this bike. We should have some more development coming for Magello, of course. Very much straight line speed heavy, that circuit in Italy. So definitely be looking at the engine again, maybe make the final upgrades to that. You see seven tenths behind Rodrigo. He's just gone a bit sloppy this last lap. Seems to get him past Arena, says McDonald. And it showed. As we approach the halfway mark of this race. Narina's looking to the outside already. Haven't even braked into the double right. Oh, McDonald says no, though. And here comes Binder to take advantage of it all. When his works KTM. So let's see what this satellite KTM can do. It's got some good pace down the straight. Going down the inside of Binder. Nicely done, McDonald. Compromised himself for the right, though. And look at 1.7 behind Rodrigo now. After a couple of corners of battling. Lost the second. To the riders in front. So he's going to have to get on his bike. Quite literally. Go through the double right at the end. And to get it down to first for breaking. I actually kept up Rodrigo in that last sector. That's pretty encouraging. Not only he's been losing pace in qualifying and practice. And into the chicane. A bit cautious under braking, McDonald. And nice and smooth. And it's like he's clearly gained some time as well on the riders in front. Just a tenth. But over the little helps. As he's still got under three laps to go, so there's still some time to maybe claw back that distance. You can just keep nailing these sectors. So Sasaki had a corn fail for 14. Czech veteran still on for a point, no. So you know, he's lost half a second in that sector. Oh, and the rear almost gets away there. Trying to get on the power. Feel like we've got a McDonald train behind. Arbolino passed Binder now for 20th. Through the left and right, nice and done. He's getting back a temp. He's around seven tenths ahead of Arbolino. Don't get how he's so smooth for that left hander now. Go through the first right. Might be the best he's ever done those last couple of corners. And he's back into the 44s, 44-5. And that's matching Rodrigo, unfortunately. Not gaining on the Argentine rider. So the little battle of Binder really has cost him. And Arenas. But still 19th. This is where he was, of course, remember. Inares. There's Masaki ahead of Loy for 26. Oh, there we go. What are you doing, mate? Been outclassed once again by McDonald. And these pace rise. Let's see if McDonald can hold on to position. If he's learned his lesson from Ares to not push too hard. These last couple of laps when the tyres are a bit worn. Sturgey and C in good nick, though. Could we do another 7 or 14 laps? We're going to the double right. Here goes Arbolino down the inside. We don't have to give it up to the Honda. Now let's see how the KTM compares to the other manufacturer. Oh, good slit stream. Down the inside into the left. 
Nicely done, McDonald. And he actually kept up with Rodrigo in that sector. Despite the battling. As he approached the final lap of another interesting race in the first half, but it's going to die down in the second. We've got Martin ahead of Kinnett. DJ Antonio in third. Fashini for Della Porti rounding out the top five. But all dips back into the 45s, just not being consistent race pace rise. It's either been 44s or 45s, there's no being consistent 44s. So going into the chicane, got a bit more aggressive on this occasion. Seems to have paid off. So I've you know, got some good slipstream on that front stretch. Picks up the throttle nice and early through the right as well. You can see they're just in a line in front. No one's really making any manoeuvres. Thought it'd be more fighting. Obviously not. Been all a bit cautious out the left hand up. I've been trying to make a manoeuvre. Going to the double right. Oh, he's been pushed by by Foggia. The Italian just launched it down the inside in the final lap. So we've seen all the time that Donald gets good slipstream down this back straight. You can make the manoeuvre into the chicane. Is he close enough to the Italian? Oh, he is. San Marino rider getting one up. From the country which is closest to him. He's going to hold on to this 19th place for all of his worth. A bit wide in the left. As Martin just beats Kenhet. DJ Antonio rounds out the podium. And all very cautious into his last couple of corners. But he makes it through his RB, you know, up to 19th. And for McDonald. It's the position where he should have finished last time out. It's not points. But his prizes. As... Get some good reward for that race. So Martin beats Kinnett by half a second in the end with DJ and turn around at the podium. Double podium for Cusini. In Bastianini ahead of his teammate Della Porta, Antonelli in sixth, Basecki seventh, Otto eighth, Mino in ninth, Lopez rounds out the top ten ahead of McPhee. Good points for the Scott ahead of Suzuki, Nuredin, Kornfeld and Suzaki. With two were just missing out. McDonald in 19th, race pace equal to lower point scorers. So anyone outside the top 10, basically. So that's pretty good on the Avintia machine. We've got Arbolino in 20th. And where was his teammate, Loy? In 26th. A few seconds back. Actually, less than two seconds back. There really was a train behind McDonald then. With Ramirez in last. As we look at the Riders' Championship, Martin needs to connect by 22 points. Dan Bassini in third, four points ahead of his teammate. DJ Antonio up to fifth ahead of Mino. Then Vizeki up to seventh ahead of, Suza of Suzuki, should I say. Then we've got Antony up to ninth ahead of Lopez. Otto up to 11th. Rodrigo, the big loser, out of the top 10 now, down to 12. Same for Tuba, down to 13th from 11th. Nuredin ahead of McDonald now by three points. Then you've got McPhee up to 19th. If his first points of the season, I believe, is now 23 riders to score points with Yachenko at the back. And then we look at the reward, reputation and development points wise. As McDonald up to level 49 now for the angle. Team Trust going up slightly. And you see reputation nicely earned from that race. As in MotoGP, it was the Vizio's head of Marcus Jack Miller in third on the Premac. What the hell? And then in Moto2, we have got Alex Marquez winning ahead of Baldassari and Bagnaya. And then do we have Red Bull rookies? We don't, do we? But what a crazy result in MotoGP. So with those development points, we're going to the engine. We're going to the last slot and increasing that power, I think. Will that be better than acceleration? Actually, let me know down below. What should we go for? Traction or power? But we are definitely going to improve the brake, should we, or the suspension. Let's improve the suspension. I haven't used any points in the suspension. So we improved our hydraulics and elasticity. And then I simply got to improve the brakes for Mijello. So 
Morality. I have no idea how to say that. I apologize. Prevents the wheels from blocking when braking. Well, aggression increases the bike's braking power. I assume we might need this one to prevent the locking. I think that's been an issue with the brakes as well. So there we go. So our bike again developed for Magello. As next time out, we head to Italy for the sixth round of the season, encouraging signs from McDonald from that race. And the bike even more developed around the circuit. He got a podium in. Remember in the Red Bull Rookies Cup. Let's see if he can get even further. Maybe grab his first win in Moto3 next time out. Sound watching, and we'll find out then.